Hey everyone, Zachary Asin here. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about how to um, paint digitally and get good colors. Um, this is something I get asked often, um, which is, you know, how do I get realistic colors in my painting? So, for example, there's this painting I did, um, and the colors kind of work together, and I'm going to show you you know, what I use. Uh, so what that is, is a split complementary palette. And this is my site, uh, www.sycra.net. And if you go here and you click in the resources section and you scroll down, uh, you'll see a link here to Sycra's split complementary color palette. So what you're gonna wanna do, first of all, is download this. So just click uh, download color palette and then just save this image and then next step is we're going to bring it into Photoshop. All right, so now I have my split complementary palette open up in Photoshop and it's a PNG image. So what you'll notice is that it starts at layer zero and it's got transparency. So you'll want to make sure your layers window is open for this. If it's not, go to window and select layers or press F7. So that F7 hides and shows your layers window. Um, and now the first thing we're going to do is create two new layers. So just going to click the button here. It's near the trash can and that's for uh, create a new layer. So I'm just going to hit that twice. And now I'm gonna drag this uh, layer with the palette into the middle. So now we have a layer on top and our palette and a layer on the bottom. And now the bottom layer is gonna be a background. So I'm just gonna fill that with white and just gonna make hit D to get the default uh, black and white. And then control backspace, which is just fill with background color. If you remember, Alt Backspace is fill with foreground color. So Control Backspace to fill with the background color. And now the only layer I'm going to be really painting with is this layer on top. So I'm going to actually treat this very much like traditional um, painting. And real quick, I'm going to go over split complementary palette and what that is. So here's your, you know, your, the palette, I guess you would learn in school uh, where you have your red, your blue, and your yellow. And these are the primary colors. Um, you know, if you're in digital, we have uh, red, green, and uh, blue instead of uh, red, blue, and yellow. But um, let's stick with traditional because one of the things I've found is that because most people who start out, uh, begin with traditional, uh, you want a smooth way to transition. So here we have our primaries, red, blue, and yellow. Now with a split complementary, instead of having red, blue, and yellow, you pick one color, so let's say red, and then the complement to red is green. So here's complement, and then split is just to each side of the complement. So here you have like this uh, teal-ish color and this yellow-green. So you replace the blue and the yellow with the, you know, uh, blue-green and yellow-green. Um, and if you were using blue, for instance, uh, your complement is orange, so right across is orange, and then the split complements would be uh, this red-orange and uh, yellow-orange. Um, I'm not going to go into too much more detail uh, beyond that because actually on uh, the site Pencil Kings, um, if you don't know how to get there, again on my uh, website you scroll down and there's online art instruction. The first link is Pencil Kings. But here I have a tutorial on exactly how I did that image in the beginning, uh, this realistic painting, and I go into a bit more detail explaining just what a split complementary palette is. Um, so basically, you just need to know that this is a split complementary palette, and these are the split complements, and these are the colors in between. 
And now we're going to go about it pretty much as if it was traditional painting. And by that, what I mean is you're going to take colors and actually put them down and then mix them. So mix colors into each other. Um, but first, I just want to go over uh, one more thing, which is you would have this, but uh, you're going to want to save this as a different file name. So, you know, file save as because you want one palette that is basically your template that you can always go to and you load that up and then uh, depending on what image you're working on and what certain palette you want, you're going to alter that. So I'm just going to show you how we go about doing that. So first of all, the color in the top left, so right here, this is our dominant. And that means that, you know, what the general tone of the painting is, is probably going to be this. And for me, because I work uh, primarily with caricatures and things, Often I'll pick the general skin tone of um, whatever the person is. So if the person's dark skinned, I'll pick maybe a brown. If they're uh, light skinned, you know, depends. Whatever their skin is kind of based on. Uh, if I was doing an environment and let's say it's a rainy day and has a blue overtone, then I'm going to try and make this blue. But this is going to be my dominant. So um, when I go about adjusting this, all I do is I press Control U, and that brings up the hue and saturation. Alternatively, you could go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation, bring that up. And then I just change the hue slider. Now you can also change the darkness. So if you want uh, a low chroma image where everything's quite dark, you would lower this or high chroma, you know, raise this and probably increase the saturation. Um, but for the most part, I don't mess too much with uh, saturation or lightness. I really just change the hue. Um, so again, let's say I was doing a blue, a scene where things are primarily primarily blue. I'm gonna move it to you know a blue, um, and then I'll go ahead and start mixing my colors. Um, now usually. Uh, if you have a, re a reference image that comes up and then you know you'd look at your reference and you're not going to be able to mix the colors exactly as what's in your reference um, because you cannot like if you look here there is no really strong yellow so no matter how hard I try I'm not going to be able to get a strong yellow but that's fine because pretty much the biggest problem when people start color especially digitally is they click the color and they get this and you have access to all these colors and this is really where you run into problems um, when you're a beginner uh, when you're more experienced it's fine I tend to just use this and I'm okay with it because I've been using it a lot and I understand color theory and all that but um, I find this is a simple way is to just be limited so it's true, you can't get a strong yellow, um, but you make do with what you have. Um, and usually I'll start with, or often anyway, I start with a black and white image. And I've been asked this a lot. How do you take a black and white image and take it to color? And again, I'd refer you to the Pencil Kings video that really goes over that in detail. Um, but uh, real quick, let me just open up this image and... This is for a tutorial I'm working on for Pencil King, so this is kind of a sneak peek you guys are getting. But I'll start off with with the gray image, so it's just all in black and white. And uh, the palette I used for this one was this, so you'll see I actually had a, kind of an orangey tone as the dominant. And then I mix my colors and so I just filled the whole thing with that orange color and set the mode to color. So now everything, so here, see, everything gets this color. And then I start painting using the other colors. So more of these other colors I've mixed. And then I just start actually painting with the normal layer, but just mixing those colors and putting them uh, down. So 
again, I can't get all the colors of the rainbow. Um, so you will be limited, but that's actually a good thing. So let's say, so here's our color. And I'm just using uh, the Alt key, or I actually have it mapped to my tablet. And what that does is it just brings up the eyedropper tool. You could just manually keep switching between brush and eyedropper. But for me, I just keep it on brush and hold down Alt and it turns into the eyedropper. So I select the color, put it down. And then let's say I wanna get, um, I don't know, something in between these two. So then select this color, put it down and just lightly go over so I get a mid-tone color in between these two rather and then I select that. Now I'm used to using my tablet quite a bit so I have mine at opacity 100% um, but if you're just starting out and you're not quite comfortable getting the transition what I mean by you know the pressure you can't go from really light to dark just by how firm you uh, press the pen to the tablet. If you can't do that yet, um, just lower your opacity to maybe you know 50%. Uh, just something you're comfortable with, so that you can you know select a color, put it down, and you might have to go over it a couple of times, and then select another color, and then kind of just go over, and then again with the Alt key, you select the middle color. And I'm just going to raise it to 100% just because, you know, that's what's easier for me. And that's it. That's how you mix your colors. And it's very much like traditional paint. So let's say I did want a yellow um, and it's kind of bright. Well, my options are really to take this yellow-ish color and this reddish color and maybe, you know, find color in between. And maybe for my image, this is going to represent yellow. Now, it doesn't look that yellow, but if most of my image is blue, then that color is going to seem more yellow. At least it will seem yellow relative to the other colors. So in an image, it's important to remember that whatever your color is, is dependent on what colors are around it. So this looks this way compared to this. So here we're at, um, in the palette itself. You know, it seems more vibrant than when I have it here. Because uh, it's beside this, you know, these uh, relatively dull colors. But when I put it beside another vibrant color, it kind of loses some of its intensity. But pretty much that's it and when I want to get a dark I'll mix a dark like so and if you're working on top of a black and white layer and it's on color mode you don't really need to worry about uh, uh, values too much because that's going to get taken care of in the grayscale stage of it but pretty much that's it you know put down colors and just mix them as if you were painting traditionally and you had a palette and these are your paints. This is all you have to work with. So you do your best and I find, you know, you can get pretty good skin tones and nice in-between colors. And this is really what uh, beginners have trouble with. Um, people often get colors, you know, way too bright. They'll have a, they'll think, okay, the, I want a yellow and they'll pick something like this it down and it just gets you know out of control um, so what you want is more of these subtle tones uh, these gradual transitions and things being like that and if I want to lighten a color because the backgrounds white I just you know I can use the background itself so just you know lightly put down the color select it and then put it down and the reason I have this on a different layer is just so, you know, I don't accidentally go over this palette and then have a problem. So, so again, remember, just open up the palette, save it as whatever you want, call it something else, and make sure you have these three layers. 
Uh, if it's easier for you to work on a gray background, you can just change the background layer to gray. The reason I don't like to do that too much um, is just because this helps with seeing values, but I don't really care too much about the values because I have that already dealt with in the black and white stage. Um, and I like to use white to get tints. So that's why I use a white background and I'm on the wrong layer. So a good idea probably would be after you set this up and you get this to, you know, whatever color you want, uh, you would go ahead and just hit this black padlock, which locks the layer and do that for the background as well. So now you really can only go on this layer. And if I went on this layer and tried to paint, it's just it's not going to let me paint. So because uh, sometimes, you know, you'll paint on the wrong layer. And I've had a couple of times where I actually end up painting on the palette itself. And that's never good. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much the palette I use. Um, it's not something I use all the time now, but it really is helpful for beginners, especially if you're, you know, a bit timid or uh, intimidated by by this and just how many colors you have um, and I guess that's it and again if you want more detailed explanations I do have that tutorial on pencil kings and I hope it helped and thanks for watching